Hi, I'm Galen, and this is my pergola. Um, the reason I built this pergola is my son wanted to wanted to do a project with me. He, had, he hadn't really built anything before, and um, we kind of needed to do it anyhow. So I figured, well, this would be a good one to do. Um, originally, um, this was there was just a rose bush here. It was just this big slope kind of a thing. It was pretty ugly. Um, I tried to plant plants in it and whatnot, but um, we really didn't like it. Um, by building this structure, we were able to do a couple things. One is we extended our porch, so because we do use our porches. Um, in, the, in the mornings, we like to come out on the front porch because it's the west side, and we get nice shade. And then the evenings, we go on, on the back porch, which I actually built a, a back porch this year as well. And um, it really makes a difference in our lifestyle. We, we, um, it's kind of nice. It's very nice. Um, but anyhow, um, we decided to go with the, um, the pavers instead of just the slab because they're a little more traditional, you know, it's kind of um, has a little more of a, well, it kind of goes with a, with a pergola and, and trellises and whatnot. And, um, and we'd never done it before, so we figured, what the heck, let's do it. So with the pavers, one of the things we had to do is, is I, did, I went on YouTube like you're probably doing to figure out how to do it. And um, basically, we dug down about nine inches. Um, I think the specs were seven, um, but we wanted to go a little bit farther. And we there was, we did some plumbing and whatnot. And so basically, went down nine inches. And about every inch, we put in rock. Um, it's a specific type of rock um, for pavers. And then you whack it basically, and, and that means you stamp it down really, really good. Um, we spent a good day just doing that and then just layer it and then put another inch and just keep doing it keep doing it until you blow yourself up um, and then we put about a, I think it was a one inch of, of sand on top of the rock and basically you just take a couple pipes and you just kind of work it through with a board to level it up and then you fill in where the pipe is you pull the pipes out you fill in where the pipe is and then you put the pavers on top of that nice and level um, one of the things I did um, is, as I was building it, I realized that they have these strips that you can get that goes on, they go on the edge of the pavers, it kind of holds it all in, and you can buy these big nails. Um, and that works, and that's okay, and if, if there's people that, that use those, and I almost did. The only reason I didn't is because in order for me to make this stable, you have to literally go beyond the edge of the paver with the stone about 16 inches a um, couple feet um, and that way you, you, the edges of your pavers don't fall off and I didn't really want to do that because I want to plant plants as close to the the edge as possible um, so that I can get like this jasmine that I have here that will come up and climb all over the structure um, when I actually built it I didn't know whether I was going to go with jasmine or if I was going to go with um, um, something a little more robust, like or a little more heavy, um, like grapes or wisteria. And so when I built it, I actually built it for the the biggest vine possible, which is would be like a wisteria, which is very, very um, aggressive, and it could like you know on your trellises, it could wisteria potentially could destroy a trellis pretty 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 quickly. So I designed it really heavy duty, and I also designed it where I can replace anything. Um, in case the vines do take over and it, it does any destruction down down the road, uh, like these like these um, rails here. This is two, about two and a half inches on the rail, and basically all I did was do, I did dados, and then I squeezed uh, both the front and the back rails together, and then put screws everywhere. Um, no glue, and the reason I didn't put any glue in this structure is so that I can replace these if I need to. So if, if something happens and, and that board breaks or something, it wouldn't be that big of a deal for me to go and replace it. In fact, I can even go and just take the whole thing out, go fix it, and bring it back. It worked out really well that, well, that way. Um, I went with um, California Redwood. Um, I special ordered it. And um, I did put a stain, a Redwood stain on it because there was a mismatch in color. And um, I was just going to let it go, like, go rustic. But uh, my wife wanted a little color, so I went ahead and um, put a little bit of a stain on it, uh, uh, an oil-based stain. 
and I'll be doing that again um, here in another month or so. Um, if you look, look at the structure of the the pavers, one of the things I did is I have this pipe right here coming down. This roof is not very big. The drain system's not much on it. And I debated and I was like, well, I can just have it run out. But then why do that? Let's do it right. So I went ahead and I, before I did anything, I put in the pipe, the drainage on it. So that drain goes, goes over here into this um, bedding area and it runs out. And also on the very edge of the structure, I have a drain underneath. So underneath the rock, everything can drain through and then drain out. And so the rains that do fall through, they'll come down, they'll go through it, and they drain right out, no problem, out to the road. So we took care of that as well. Another thing I did is um, I, I ran some pipes over on this side that's actually coming up into that post. And that's for um, if I want to add electrical um, outlets or if I want to um, um, have water drip system coming off the top or whatever I want to do. Um, I can do that later. I don't know if I'm going to, but I figured what the heck, let's just go ahead and add that. Um, so anyhow, so that's kind of the structure of, of what I did. Um, when you look at the, or the, the foundation of it, when you look at the structure, I, I, you always go with even numbers, like 6, 12, and that's what I did. So my joists are all 6, um, six inches. And um, then on these rafters, I went with with um, with a 12 inch um, two by 12s, and um, I just cut these out. I kind of got you know got a feel for what I wanted and went with it. I like it. Turned out all right. Um, when I built this, I actually built this. I cut these to height using a water level, and it's just this big long pipe. Um, it's just a a hose it's you can see through it and you fill it with water and you hold one on one end and one on the other end and you level it up and literally I built this with a water level water levels work real good I built my first house I've built um, I actually built it using a water level and it worked worked out real good um, the other thing I did is if you look up here I went ahead and went with a rabbit on here um, for that joint a lot of people don't do that they just use a butt joint here and that's where they take this and they just put it on the outside and they just run the two bolts through. Um, and they just kind of squeeze it together. And, you know, that's probably good enough for the size of the structure. But um, I like to clean my windows and I'm going to stand up on this. And um, I, want to, I want to have the strength and I want to do it right. You know, what did it take? It took an extra couple, about a couple hours to do the whole thing. Also just do it right. And so I did it that way. Um, all the... The bolts, all the screws, everything I'd done was done with stainless steel as well, so it should last forever. Um, anyhow, it was a fun project to do this. Um, this little thing here I actually picked up when I was in my early 20s. Uh, me and my wife went up to Samoa, um, Samoa Cookhouse, and went to breakfast up there and stuff. And somewhere up there in the Redwoods, we, I seen this and I thought, hey, that's pretty cool. And I bought it and I always thought I'd hang it somewhere. And I just couldn't find the right place. And it just worked out perfect for this. I thought, yeah, that's kind of cool. And then we picked up this little lantern here that's, um, that's actually got a, it's kind of cool. It's got a um, it's battery operated candle and it's got a remote control so we can turn it on and off if we want. And at nighttime, it, is, it really looks good out here um, with this thing going. But um, yeah, and if you look at the, um, you look at the pavers, you see my pattern? I got a little diamond going on here. Very easy pattern to come up with. And um, I actually uh, implemented that into my trellis here. And I went ahead and went with little diamonds uh, and uh, kind of make a match. So, And there's a guy online, I can't remember his name. I'd give him kudos if I could remember. But um, if you look up trellis, I'm sure you'll find it. He made something that's very, very similar to this. Um, I made it a little different, but I kind of, I seen his video and I kind of went off of that and thought, that's kind of cool. And so it matches what I wanted, so I just kind of did it and um, basically just measured between each one to get, uh, you know, to get the effect going. So um, I think they t I think this turned out okay. It's not too bad. Let's take a look look from, from the outside and you can kind of see why I went with that size and structure. So if you look at the um, 
the existing porch, you can see that I wanted this to blend in and look like it's almost always been there. Now, of course, the colors are different. I could have just painted it green and I could have went with cheaper materials. Um, but originally I was thinking I was going to just let it kind of rust out, rustic, like gray, kind of a gray kind of effect. And, uh, but my wife really wanted to, she thought red, white, and green kind of looked good. And I think she's right. The other thing is I wanted it to kind of blend in with this thing over here. This is a wishing well that me and my daughter built um, years ago, probably 15 years ago we built that. And I, again, I went online and seen a wishing well, and I just kind of uh, got a picture of it online and just kind of just did it myself, just kind of made it. Uh, I took a week off from work, and me and my daughter built that. So my daughter, Janessa, and I built that. My son, Jonathan, and I uh, built this, so it's kind of fun. It's uh, kind of neat to have that. It's kind of neat to work with your kids um, on your house to do projects. Um, and then your wife likes the end result, right? So... Uh, Price-wise, a couple thousand bucks. Um, I'd say more like 2,500. I told my wife I could do it for 1,200, and I was—I uh, never make budget. But what are you going to do? I always—I always go a little above and beyond what I, my initial idea is. Um, and then, of course, we went with these stones on the on the outside, these bricks or whatever. Um, this was actually a lot of work trying to get that level. You know, you can throw things together. The secret is you got to have a, it's got to be level. And you, you can tell when somebody does something right just by looking. Everybody can see level. So always make sure you go level. And so that was kind of tough because it was hard to get that level. Um, but we got it. Um, probably three days to put that in just to, just to, to meet that. But um, anyhow, this is what we got. Um, I kind of like it. Um, so anyhow, so that's my, my pergola and, and uh, I think it looks pretty good. So I'm also going to do a video of my back porch. I didn't, I didn't video the tape, the construction of it. And maybe I probably should do a little bit of that. Um, but I'll, I'll talk, I'll do the same kind of thing, kind of give a heads up on how I built the back porch and what I did in order to get the structure up and running. But, uh, uh, this. I'm thinking this was five weekends is what it took to do this, me and my son. And just kind of plowed through it, got it to the, the interesting part about building this is all the neighbors would walk by and talk, talk to us on the weekends as we were building it. So it's kind of, it's kind of cool. Even the neighbors we didn't know, um, you know, that lived like down the street a little bit, we kind of got to know them because it was the, the whole neighborhood kind of jumped in on the project. They thought it was kind of a cool thing to, to watch it go up. And we didn't, you know, I didn't hire anybody to do it. We did it ourselves. So that's kind of a cool thing, too. Feels good to build things, you know. It really does. It makes you, um, makes you feel good about yourself to build, to create, you know. We're built, we're created in the image of God. And so when you build things, you get that feeling, you know. And there's a reason why Noah was a, was a, a boat builder. or He was a carpenter, and he was able to build boats. And there's the same reason with Jesus his dad was a carpenter. There's a reason for that. Um, if you build things and you're creative with your hands, you know what I'm talking about. So anyhow, um, there it is. There's my goal. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. But uh, we'll continue to make some projects and um, videotape them. And it's a lot of fun. It's, as, it's just as much fun doing the videotapes as it is doing the projects. So anyhow, thanks. I'll see you later.